At the beginning of the movie we see a small town called Barrow in northern Alaska. This city is very cold and almost all year round is covered with snow. What is unique about this small town is that every year for 30 days the sun will not be seen, making the situation dark and very cold for 30 days. Some people who do not want to spend their days in the freezing winter without sunlight prefer to immigrate in nearby cities in the southern region. But that day before sunset many strange things happened. All the public telephones installed in the corners of the city had been tampered with by someone. A sheriff named Eben and his partner Billy tried to investigate this strange incident, but did not get any clues. Then a strange incident occurred again. All the guard dogs belonging to the citizens had been sadistically killed by someone. As a sheriff who is responsible for the security of the city, these events certainly make Eben very angry and confused. Moreover, in another place where the power plant is located, again mysterious creatures appear. The old man in charge of guarding this power plant died instantly. He was apparently attacked by a horde of vampires who had indeed been stalking this small town from a few days earlier. After slaughtering the old guard, the vampires damaged the power plant which made the city dark and increasingly cold. It turned out that the purpose of these vampires destroying all the public telephones Slaughtering all the guard dogs and making the town pitch black without lighting was to isolate and slaughter all the townspeople until there was nothing left. Eben, who was at the office with his brother, Jack and his wife, Stella, was again confused by the sudden power outage. Moreover, the old man in charge of guarding the power plant did not pick up the phone when contacted. Eben rushed to the place where the power plant was located. With the flashlight he had, he approached and to Eben's surprise, the old man in charge of guarding the power plant was found dead in a very tragic condition. By turning on the siren of his car, Eben drove around the city and asked all citizens to take shelter in the house and asked all citizens not to leave the house. Because even Eben did not know what kind of creature was threatening the small town. On that cold night where it was snowing heavily, the vampire horde began to attack the people in the small town. The vampires jumped into people's houses, slaughtered and dragged all the townspeople one by one. Eben who had just returned to the office, because he was curious about what was threatening his town, continued his patrol around the city. This time he was accompanied by his wife, Stella, who is also the sheriff of the town. After a while, Eben asked Stella to stop the car because he saw something strange not far in front of him. Eben got out of the car followed by Stella, who then used long-range binoculars. After seeing the strange creature in front of her, Stella asked Eben to quickly get into the car and try to get away from the area. Sure enough a few moments later, a vampire with a very fast movement jumped onto the car they were using. This vampire attacked the roof of the car. Eben who panicked tried to shoot him with a gun, but still this vampire kept trying to attack them from the roof of the car. Stella who suddenly broke, made this vampire fall forward, hit him and quickly left the vampire. Stella and Eben who had returned to the city center, now saw that the city was chaotic and fire was burning everywhere. They both entered into a small cafe in the city. Some of the townspeople were also hiding in that place including Jack. Eben's brother who also fled to that place. The residents looked confused by what was attacking their small town but out of fear they could only hide in a very tense situation. Meanwhile, outside the cafe, a horde of vampires had appeared with sharp teeth and bloody jaws. They planned to kill every person they found in the small town. The absence of sunlight which is their weakness for the next 30 days really makes these vampires free to prey on anyone around them. These vampires entered people's homes and slaughtered all the residents very sadistically. The citizens are really made helpless especially these vampires are immune from gun bullets and can move very quickly. Because he felt that their current hiding place was not safe, Eben asked the others to move to a house with a secret attic inside, so that the citizens can move to the secret attic more safely. Eben and Stella intend to divert the attention of the vampires by driving around the city in a car. After only a few moments Eben drove off in the car. Several vampires had managed to stop their car. These vampires attacked Eben and Stella and turned the car they were using upside down. Eben and Stella were trapped inside the car. The vampires were trying to pull them out of the car to be preyed upon. But luckily just as Eben was about to be eaten by these vampires, a heavy vehicle drove up and crashed into the vampires who were trying to prey on Eben. Eben and Stella immediately ran to get on the heavy vehicle leaving the herd of vampires who were trying to chase after them. Long story short, Eben and Stella arrived at Charlie's house. A house that is said to have a secret attic that is safe to hide in. Eben and Stella entered the house with the help of Bo, a big man who previously saved them from the vampire herd. Using a small flashlight that Eben carried around, he finally found the entrance to the secret attic. The residents who were previously with them were already there. 
They hid there for several days silently and remained vigilant from vampire attacks that could come at any time. From behind the gap in the attic window, now looks Barrow City really turned into a dead city. Almost all the humans there have been consumed, leaving only Eben and a few people who came to hide with him who numbered no more than eight people. In the darkness of the night, a woman suddenly appeared and walked alone while asking for help. Eben, who heard the woman's voice, beaked out from the secret attic. But instead of helping, Eben found out that the vampires were sneaking up behind the woman and would force anyone who tried to help her to do so. This woman was only used as a trap by the vampires to lure other humans out of hiding. Because this trap was deemed a failure, this woman was killed by the vampires. Although Eben and others are now safe from vampire attacks, but as ordinary humans they now face a new problem, which is that their food and drink supplies are running out. Because it is impossible to survive in hiding for the next few days, Eben asks the residents to immediately move to the supermarket in the center of the city. Of course, this was risky, but by taking advantage of the heavy snowstorm they all finally walked in the middle of the storm. Eben entered the supermarket. After making sure the situation was safe, he and other residents began to collect food and objects that could be used as weapons. Inside the supermarket, which they thought was safe, a vampire in the form of a child was there. This vampire began to attack very brutally. The situation was very chaotic, but by using an axe, Jack finally managed to kill the vampire. Because the blizzard had subsided and it wasn't safe for all of them to stay at the supermarket, Eben asked everyone to immediately move back to a safer place while he himself would divert the attention of the vampire. While he himself would again distract the attention of the vampires by running around in the middle of the city. The vampires who were still watching the city saw Eben and quickly chased him. Eben ran and arrived at a small warehouse where the power generator was located. One of the female vampires went after Eben but Eben, who was already prepared, immediately turned on the light and managed to burn the female vampire. Eben ran back to hide but the vampire herd also continued to chase Eben. Bo, who was worried about Eben's safety, came back to help using the big car he had. Quite a lot of vampires he managed to kill with the big car that had a giant chainsaw. The herds of vampires who were previously looking for Eben now all started attacking Bo. Bo was finally pressed to face the large number of vampires. He finally chose to blow himself up with the vampires who were chasing him. Eben could only see Bo's sacrifice from a distance and immediately followed Stella in her hiding place. Shortly there he saw the signal lights from his colleague Billy's house. Eben and Stella quickly ran to Billy's house where the light signal was seen. It's true that Billy is still alive but his condition is unstable because he has lost his entire family to vampires. Amidst the cold snowstorm, Eben and Stella take Billy to hide under the house again. They intend to find a safer hiding place. Not long after, suddenly from a distance, Stella saw a child walking alone. This child seems to be one of the people who survived the vampire attack. From under the house, Stella called out to the child. But just as Stella managed to grab the child, a vampire appeared and walked towards them. For the safety of Stella and the child, Eben tried to distract the vampire followed by Billy who had been hiding with him. Eben ran and was chased by the vampire, while Billy hid behind a residential building which turned out to be another vampire already stalking him. Eben finally arrived at a building that looked like a garbage processing factory. Here he met Jack and several other people. Billy finally arrived at the place but it turned out that the vampire who was stalking Billy was still following him from behind. Eben who was hiding with several other people heard Billy's voice but unfortunately for Billy, the vampire who had been following him since before suddenly pounced on him from behind. Eben tried to help Billy but the vampire attacked Eben brutally and managed to make Eben cornered to the garbage shredder right behind him. Billy, who was already dying because he saw Eben pressed, ran and pushed the vampire into the shredder. The vampire died instantly, but Billy who had been bitten by the vampire also began to turn into a vampire figure. Because Eben couldn't bear to see his best friend become a vampire, he ended Billy's life with an axe. Worried about Stella's condition, Eben contacted Stella with a walkie-talkie. Stella and the child still managed to survive the vampire attack. They are hiding under a snow-covered freight truck, which if they don't move soon Stella and the child could freeze to death because of the very cold weather. But that's not all, because several vampires were seen walking around Stella's hiding place which if she came out of hiding she would be killed by the vampire herd. Eben who doesn't want his wife to die intends to save Stella, but the overwhelming number of vampires is just as suicidal if he goes there. The vampire swarms who were angry because they could not find Eben began to burn people's houses and make the city of Barrow now red hot. Eben, who was already pressed by the situation where he had to quickly save Stella, 
without thinking took a syringe and took Billy's blood who had almost turned into a vampire. Eben thought it would be impossible if he fought the vampires as an ordinary human so he decided to turn himself into a vampire. Eben then went to the vampires disguised as an ordinary human. Seeing that the vampires were distracted by Eben, Jack told Stella to run away. Eben then fought and managed to kill the chief vampire there and made the other vampires scared and left. Stella then meets Eben who has become a vampire and they spend the remaining time sitting together until Eben dies of sunburn and the movie ends. If you like this video don't forget to subscribe. Because by subscribing you have supported me to make better videos. What movie do you want next? Just comment below. Have a nice day.